After finding a magical machine that turns him into an adult, 13-year-old Josh Baskin ends up in the bustling city of New York with a corporate job and an unexpected romance. Josh Baskin plays his video game when his mother calls him to take out the garbage. Because of the distraction, he ends up losing his game. He takes out the trash, then mounts his bike to meet his friend, Billy. The two hang out when their classmate, Cynthia, shows up. Upon seeing her, Josh gets flustered, and his heart skips a beat when she calls him. Seeing the chemistry between them, Billy promises to find out whether Cynthia likes Josh too. The two head home, bursting into a happy song. That night, Josh's father pushes a crib into his room as his parents want him to share a room with Rachel, his little sister. Elsewhere, Billy's mom rants about how she does everything at home while Billy serves dinner, sighing at his mother's monologue. Later, the friends talk on the walkie-talkie, and Billy insists that Josh has a chance with Cynthia. Days later, Josh goes to the carnival with his parents and sees Cynthia queuing for a ride. To impress her, he decides to try out the daunting ride. As he converses with her, a boy named Derek approaches, and Josh realizes that Cynthia is on a date with him. As he's about to go on the ride, the operator stops him since he's too short for the ride. Feeling gloomy, he walks alone until he comes across a Zalter machine. He drops his 25 cents, but nothing seems to happen, so he bangs on it. Suddenly, the machine activates and asks him to make a wish. Josh wishes he was big and a card comes out, saying his wish is granted. He looks down and discovers that the machine isn't plugged in. Finding it creepy, he quickly leaves. After a heavy storm the night before, Mrs. Baskin calls Josh for school. He sleepily makes his way to the bathroom, but when he looks in the mirror, he sees a grown man. This startles him, realizing that his wish has come true. Due to the sudden growth spurt, Josh steals his father's clothing and hurries to leave without his mother noticing. He tries to look for the machine, but what's left of the carnival is nothing but trash. He returns home and tries to convince his mother about his circumstances, but Mrs. Baskin doesn't believe him and threatens him out of the house. Meanwhile, Billy messes up at PE class, so he takes all the balls back into their equipment closet. Suddenly, Josh approaches him, explaining the crisis at hand. However, the boy freaks out and screams for help, so Josh sings their favorite song to prove who he is. At Josh's house, his parents are worried sick about his disappearance, so they report it to the police. As neighbors gather around the Baskin residence, Billy discreetly carries a bag of clothes. He takes it to Josh, who's hiding, and advises him to find the machine and take back his wish. Josh worries that he'd get in trouble with his parents, but Billy assures him that they'd be so happy to see him when he returns as a kid. After this, the two get on a bus to New York, thinking the carnival will be there. When they arrive, they go through the city's busy streets and check in at a hotel. However, Billy has to go home, but promises to come back for him tomorrow. After he leaves, Josh gets scared by gunshots and men yelling, so he cries himself to sleep. The next day, Billy and Josh check every gaming store and arcade in the city, searching for the machine. They even head to the license bureau to get a list of all carnivals, fairs, and arcades, but it'll take more than a month to get the actual list. Josh dreads being an adult for a while, but Billy encourages him to find the job until he can be a kid again. As the two talk over some ice cream, Billy searches job listings in the newspaper. Josh thinks about a job that he fancies and he chooses a position as a computer operator. With this, the two head to Macmillan Toys for Josh to apply. There he fills out his information, and the personal director luckily misinterprets his experience and education. Suddenly, Susan Lawrence steps in, complaining about an employee and demanding that the director hire a replacement. Because of this, he hires Josh immediately. The following day, Susan comes to work and finds her co-workers busy unboxing gifts for a bride-to-be. This pisses her off as no one's working, so she heads to her office to test a Princess Gwendolyn doll for voice runs. Later, Josh starts his first day at work, but his colleague advises him to work slower, otherwise he'd get everyone else fired. Meanwhile, Susan goes to meet Paul Davenport, her co-worker and boyfriend, to report how their sales are going down. She points out that the product line was his idea, but he tells her to race it to the company owner, Mr. Macmillan. She argues that it's not her fault, so Paul promises to report it instead. In his cubicle, Josh tries to call his mother, assuring her that her son is fine. However, she thinks he's a kidnapper, but he assures him that he's okay. Susan and Paul explain to Macmillan about the company's dropping sales when Josh suddenly bumps into the boss. Josh explains that he's hurrying to copy some documents, and the owner commends him for hustling. Soon, Josh receives his first paycheck, exciting him. With this money, he and Billy splurge on food. Still, Josh misses his family, so he calls his mother again, pretending to do a survey just to hear her voice. The following day, Josh gets fascinated as he visits a toy store, suddenly missing being a kid again. While he's playing with some kids, Macmillan finds him, who's there to see what kids really think of the toys. Asking for Josh's opinion, the boss is amazed by his knowledge of modern gadgets and his upbeat, childish excitement. 
The two end up playing on a foot-operated electronic keyboard, performing Heart and Soul and Chopsticks. Because of this, Josh lands a dream job getting paid to test toys. Meanwhile, Paul gets enraged that Josh got promoted so quickly. He thinks Macmillan is crazy for making Josh vice president of product development. Soon, Josh shows Billy his new office, and his friend thinks he's lucky with his promotion. One day, Susan and Paul try to figure out where Josh came from because there's no record of him from any toy company, not noticing that Josh's picture as a kid is on their milk carton. At work, Paul struggles to focus on his presentation as Josh tests out a toy. Despite this, Macmillan looks at him fondly. After Paul's presentation, Josh raises his hand and asks why the toy turns from a building into a robot. He questions how it could be fun, then suggests how to improve it, to which everybody agrees. This infuriates Paul, and he sees Josh as a threat. Later on, Josh and Billy move into a new, spacious apartment. They spend most of their time playing and buying games for their new place. At the same time, Josh keeps improving at work while he writes letters to his mother, reassuring her that he's safe. Days later, the company plans a special event, so Billy helps Josh find a new suit. At the party, everybody has a great time. Susan approaches Macmillan about a new product line, but the boss reminds her that they're at a party. Josh arrives wearing a white suit with elaborate details. His co-workers find it funny, but Susan can't help but watch in awe. Macmillan is also impressed with his suit. He spends the night tasting everything, and people find his behavior odd. Meanwhile, Susan is tired of hearing Paul's dry office humor, so she approaches Josh. However, he eats something terrible and asks for a milkshake. Susan offers him a ride to get one, and they leave together. As they take the company limo, Susan tries to talk about being in a relationship with someone she works with, but Josh keeps playing with the car's features. He then opens the sunroof and invites Susan to come up with him. As they do, Susan smiles, enjoying the time. Josh notes that they passed by his apartment, so Susan asks to check the place out. This leads them to Josh's apartment, with Susan implying spending the night together, but the man misinterprets this as a sleepover. Susan finds the place interesting with its uncanny gaming machines and trampoline. Suddenly, Josh pulls her into the trampoline. Despite hesitating at first, Susan enjoys the time as Josh shows her how fun it is. Afterward, they play some board games. Before going to bed, Susan fusses over posing alluring when Josh returns from the bathroom. As he approaches, she prepares for what's to come. However, he lunges to the top bunk of the bed to sleep. Just then, he peeps his head from the top bunk and hands her a glow-in-the-dark compass ring, saying that it'll keep her from being lost. As she puts the ring on, Susan can't help but smile. The next day, Paul questions Susan's sudden disappearance. However, she reassures him that she only gave Josh a ride home. She then unintentionally bothers Paul as she switches the radio station. When he tells her to stop playing with everything, Susan laughs, remembering Josh. Later, Paul invites Josh to play wall tennis. Being a competitive guy, Paul does his best to win, but it gets more intense, so he cheats. Josh speaks up about it, but Paul denies it, leading them to a fight. Josh ends up with a bleeding nose after Paul punches him. Susan nurses his wounds and advises him never to engage with Paul again because everything's a fight to him. He asks why she's nice, then adds that she's one of the nicest people he has ever met. This makes Susan smile and she kisses him on the cheek. The next night, Josh goes to Macmillan's office, seeing him looking stressed. Macmillan complains about their plan to expand the market to kids older than 12 years old. He notes that they can't keep a child from growing up since a 13-year-old boy only wants a girl his age. This catches Josh's attention. One day, Susan returns Paul's things to break up with him. He wonders if she's interested in Josh now because he's in a higher position in the company. Offended, Susan stresses that it's because Josh is a grown-up. The next day, Josh celebrates his birthday with Billy. Billy surprises his friend with a birthday cake, so he happily makes a wish. Afterward, Billy plans out their day, but Josh says he has other things to do, which disappoints his friend. He then goes to the carnival with Susan. The two enjoy the night like kids and win prizes. Just then, Susan hears the orchestra playing and asks Josh to go dance with her. As they leave, Josh fails to notice that a Zoltar machine is nearby. The two dance to jazz music and Susan shares how she feels safe and vulnerable around him. She starts kissing his neck, but Josh pulls away, saying that he has something important to tell. However, he holds back and kisses Susan instead. Things escalate and they end up at Susan's place. She undresses and turns the lights off, but Josh turns them back on so he can see everything in detail. The next day, Josh goes to work with the biggest smile. He feels more like a grown-up and tells his secretary to give him black coffee. Meanwhile, Susan acts nicer to her workmates and even gives one of them a basket of goodies. Days later, they have dinner with Susan's friends. A kid named Adam comes over and asks his dad to help him with algebra. He gets rejected as his father is occupied with the guests. Being good at the subject, Josh stands up and helps the kid. As they solve the problems in Adam's room, Susan and her friends can't help but be amazed. 
Meanwhile, Billy tries calling Josh, but no one answers. At work, Macmillan asks Josh to create a proposal for a new line of toys. The man finds the new task intimidating as it requires formulating business aspects, so Susan offers to help him in marketing while he works on the ideas. Meanwhile, Billy comes home from school and finds the list of carnivals in the mail. Elsewhere, Josh buys a sports magazine from a stall when a kid comes over to buy comics. This sparks an idea in him about what his proposal will be. He pitches this idea about an electronic comic book to Susan, but she can barely focus because she's been itching to put a label on her relationship with Josh. When she asks how he feels about her, Josh bashfully hits her with a magazine. She hits him back and the two get into a play fight. On the other hand, Billy still can't get a hold of his friends since he's busy with work. Meanwhile, Josh is occupied with the proposal, and Susan stays up late with him to prepare. As she goes to get coffee, she runs into Macmillan, who tells her that she's looking good lately, suggesting that Josh is good for her. She gets flattered by this. After being unable to contact his friend for days, Billy goes to the office to give him the list. However, Josh is on a call when he arrives, so he dismisses him. Angry, Billy ends the call and shows him the list that they've been waiting for. However, Josh is mad for what he just did and yells at him, saying that he's doing something important. Hearing this, Billy reminds him of who he really is before walking out. Back home, Billy tries to throw away things that remind him of his best friend. He suddenly hears his radio chatter and discovers that it's Mrs. Baskin in Josh's bedroom. He peeks through the window and finds the worried mother on the other side. She sadly shows him the supposed gift she bought for Josh's birthday and gives it to him instead. However, Billy returns it and assures her that her son will come home soon. Meanwhile, Josh burns the midnight oil on his proposal. As he goes around his things, he notices his old video game, which reminds him of his life as a kid. The following day, Josh heads to his old neighborhood and sees kids playing with the autumn leaves. He also passes by his school and sees the students taking a class picture. As he heads to town, he sees Cynthia hanging out with her friends and other kids playing baseball. This makes him ponder about his life. He comes home to Susan that night and she notices that he's sad. Josh finally decides to tell her the truth about who he is. He tells her how he misses his family but Susan misunderstands, thinking that he's married. However, Josh assures her that he's not and tells her that he's really a child. Susan interprets this as Josh's fear of commitment and dismisses his explanation about the Zalter machine. Angry, she leaves her bed. Later, Susan gets up and checks on Josh's wallet. She sees a card with gum stuck on it and the Zalter card that Josh was talking about. Meanwhile, Billy calls all the carnivals on the list, asking if they have a Zalter machine. The following day, Josh and Susan go to work. Susan stops by a stall to buy a newspaper and asks Josh if he has gum. He buys one and she realizes that it's the same gum she found on the card from his wallet. Later, the couple prepares for the presentation while Billy finally finds the Zalter machine, which happens to be at Seapoint Park. He hurries to Josh's office to bring him the address, but when he decides to still go to his meeting, Billy leaves. Josh continues with his proposal, but the board fails to get his point. Susan jumps to the rescue to explain the electronic comic book where kids can choose what happens. However, Josh gets disheartened and excuses himself. When Paul questions if a kid would pay so much for a comic book, Susan realizes something and goes after Josh. Realizing that he's not cut out for adult life, Josh takes a cab to Seapoint Park. Billy sees him and cheers, which Susan overhears. She asks Billy where Josh left, introducing herself as his girlfriend. At the park, Josh looks for the machine and finally finds it. He inserts his coin, but nothing happens, so he unplugs the machine and it finally works. Susan catches up to him, but Josh is already making his wish to be a kid again. Seeing him with the machine, she confirms that he isn't lying. This disheartens Susan, knowing that their relationship is over. However, Josh suggests she uses the machine to turn herself younger, but Susan declines, saying that being a child once was enough. With this, she drives Josh to his family's house, and before he leaves, Susan kisses him on the forehead. As Susan is about to drive off, she takes one last look at Josh. To her surprise, he's back to being a 13-year-old. He looks back at her, then Susan smiles before leaving. After this, Josh runs into his house and finally reunites with his family. Soon, he hangs out with Billy like in old times. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.